Welcome to this Corporate Maths Primary video on how to divide numbers by 10, 100 and 1000. In this video we're going to look at how to divide numbers that end in zeros by 10, 100 and 1000 and how to divide numbers that don't end in zeros by 10, 100 and 1000. So let's start off by dividing 120 by 10. So to do that what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the bus shelter method to begin with and then we'll get a bit of a shortcut. So 10 into 1 is 0, remainder 1. 10 into 12 goes once, remainder 2, and 10 into 20 goes twice. So if we divide 120 by 10, we get an answer of 12. And the reason is the 100, the digits in the 120, so the 100 gets 10 times smaller, so it becomes 10, and the 20 gets 10 times smaller, and it becomes 2. Now, you might notice that if we have 120, if we take off 10, then we get the answer of 12. And let's test that out for some other ones. If we had 70 and we divide that by 10, well, as you know in your 7 times tables, you'll know the answer is 7. And that is the same as just taking off the 0 off 70. So if we divide numbers that end in zeros by 10, we can just take off one of the zeros and get to the answer very quickly without having to use the bus shelter method. So if we had 250 divided by 10, well, that's going to be 25. If we had 900 divided by 10, taken off one zero, would give, you, would give us 90. And also if we had 3000 divided by 10, well taken off one zero, would give us 300. So as I said, that's just a bit of a shortcut to work out these numbers really quickly and simply, the answers really quickly and simply. Um, but we can sort of work it out by using your bus shelter method or the knowledge that each of the digits will get 10 times smaller. Okay, so our next question is to divide a number that doesn't end in zero, such as 36 by 10. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna write the 36 into the place, uh, place value uh, table. So we've got thousands, hundreds, tens, units, tenths, and hundredths. And we're gonna divide 36 by 10. Now what that means is, it means that each of the digits is gonna get 10 times smaller. So the 30 will move one column to the right. So the three will move one column to the right and it will go from the tens to the units. And the six, which is units, will move one column to the right to get 10 times smaller and it will become tenths. So our answer will become 3.6. So if we divide 36 by 10, the answer is 3.6, and that's because each of the digits in our number, the 30 and the 6, both get 10 times smaller. So if we had 29 divided by 10, they're going to get 10 times smaller, so our digits are going to move one column to the right in our place value. So the 20 will become 2, decimal point, and the 9 units will become tenths. So the answer, the answer will become 2.9. 3, well, it's in the units. So let's actually have a look at this one in the table. If we had 3 units and we divide that by 10 it will move one column to the right to get 10 times smaller so answer will become 0.3 if we had 725 if we divide that by 10 all the digits will move one column to the right so they will get uh, 10 times smaller so 725 divided by 10 well the 7 will move to the tens the 2 will move to the units, and the 5 will move to the tenths. So 725 divided by 10 will be 72.5. And our last one, if we were dividing 0 0.6 by 10, well, we have 0 0.6, 0 0.6. The, um, the 6 is in the tenths column. It's going to be 10 times smaller, so it will move to the hundredths. And then we'll put in zeros as placeholders. So the answer will be 0 0.06. So that's it. So if we divide a number by 10 that doesn't end in a zero, we just move all the digits one column to the right in our place value. So in other words, all the digits get 10 times smaller. Okay, let's have a look at what happens now whenever we divide numbers end in zeros by 100. So again, let's use the bus shelter method for this. Um, and actually, this one's a bit of common sense, actually. If I said 900 divided by 100, well, that's going to be 9 because 9 100s is... 900. So if we divide 900 by 100, we get 9. Now, as you can see, the number um, 900 has lost its two zeros. We've taken off two zeros to get to the answer very quickly. Now, we could for these number or these uh, divisions, such as 1,200, we could use the bus shelter method, and we could do it as before and go 100 into 1 is 0, remainder 1. 100 into 12 is 0, remainder 12. 100 into 120 is 1, remainder 20, and 100 into 200 is uh, 
two. And we could just get the answer of 12 using the bush shelter method. But again, it was, it's nice just to have a really quick and simple way of dividing by 100 really quickly. And as you notice, if we had 1,200, if we just take off the two zeros, we get our answer really quickly. So here, if we had 300 divided by 100, we could just take off the three zeros, or the two zeros to leave us with three. If we had 4,000 divided by 100, we could just take off two zeros to leave us with 40. And if we had 13,000 divided by 100, we could just take off two zeros to leave us with 130. So as I said, we could use the division using bus shelter method, etc. But it's much quicker and simpler to just take off zeros as long as the number ends in zeros. Okay, now let's have a look and see what we do if the number doesn't end in zero. So if we had 125 and we divide that by 100. So what that means is each of the digits in the number will get 100 times smaller. So the 100 will get 100 times smaller. So that will move two columns to the right. So one, two, so it will move to the units. The two in the tens column will move two columns to the right. So one, two, and it will move to the tenths. And the five units will move two columns to the right, one, two, and it will move to the hundredths. So our answer is 1.25. And the really the easiest way to do that is to just think if you divide them by 100, each of the digits in the number is getting 100 times smaller, so they're just going to be moving two columns to the right in the place value table. So if we had 461, if we move those all two places to the right, the four in the hundreds will move to the units, the decimal point, and then we will have the rest of the number, so 4.61. The 170 divided by 100, again, we're going to move the number, and this doesn't end in two zeros, so we can't just take off the two zeros in this one. So the digits in the uh, in the number 170 will move two places to the right. And so the one in the hundreds will move to the units, so it'd be 1.7. We could write the zero here, but with decimal numbers, there's no need to, so the answer would be just 1.7. Um, 82 divided by 100, again, if we just have a look at this one quickly, if we had 82, and we divide that by 100, the numbers will move two columns to the right, so the, because they're getting 100 times smaller, so the, the eight and the tens will move one, two, it'll move to the tenths, and the two in the units will move one, two, and it'll move to the hundredths, so the answer will be 0 0.82. And finally, if we were dividing a number such as 1.3 by 100, the numbers are gonna move two digits to the right, or the digits will move two digits to the right, so the one will move to the tenths and then the hundredths, so it will be equal to 0 0.013, because the one was in the units, it's now moved to the tenths and then to the hundredths. So our answer is 0 0.013. Okay, and finally, let's look at dividing by a thousand. So if the numbers end in three zeros or more, we can divide by a thousand really quickly and simply. Um, seven thousand divided by one thousand is obviously seven. Um, these other ones we can just divide really quickly. Six thousand divided by uh, one thousand, taken off the three zeros, would be six. Twelve thousand divided by one thousand would be taken off three zeros, twelve. 20,000 divided by 1,000, taken off three zeros, one, two, three, would leave us with 20. And finally, 350,000 divided by 1,000, taken off three zeros, would leave us with 350. So again, we could use the bus shelter method for these, but it's just quicker and simpler to have the shortcut to work it out really quickly. And finally, dividing numbers that don't end in at least three zeros by 1,000. So if I had 1,200, and we were dividing it by a thousand, well, all of the digits in the number we're dividing will get one thousand times smaller. So that will move each of the digits three columns to the right. So the one in the thousands will move one, two, three to the right, so it'll move to the units, and that means it'll be followed by the two, and we could put the zeros there, but there's no point after the decimal point, so our answer would be 1.2. With 2,600 divided by 1,000, again, the digits will move three places to the right. So the two will move from the thousands to the hundreds, to the tens, to the units. So it will become 2.6. Again, if we know that the two is gonna to move to the units, we can just follow on with the rest of the number. There's no point writing the zeros. If we had 751, divided by 1,000, so 751. Again, the digits in the number we're dividing will move, get three to, um, it will get 1,000 times smaller, so they all move three columns to the right, so the seven will move one, two, three into the tenths, so it'll be 0 0.751. 
and our last division, 3 divided, uh, three divided by 1,000, if we had a 3 in the units, and we're going to divide it by 1,000, it will move 3 columns to the right, so 1, 2, 3. So our answer will be 0 0.003, just remembering to put in those noughts too, just as sort of place value holders. And that's it. So that's how to divide numbers by 10, 100, and 1,000. If the number ends, if we're divided by 10, and the number ends in zeros, we can take off one zero. If we're dividing by 100 and the number ends in at least two zeros, we can just take off two zeros. If we're dividing by 1,000 and the number ends in at least three zeros, we can just take off the three zeros or take off three zeros. If the number doesn't end in a zero and we're dividing by 10, we can just move the number or the digits in the number one column to the right because the number is getting 10 times smaller. If we're dividing a number that doesn't end in at least two zeros by 100, we know that the digits in the number are going to get 100 times smaller, so we can move each of the digits two columns to the right in our place value table. And finally, if we're dividing a number that doesn't end in at least three zeros by 1,000, we can just move all the digits in the number three columns to the right in our place value. And that's it.